saving myself a recording session. Yeah. We're glad that you guys are here. And if you are online watching today, wherever you are, whenever you are, you are welcomed and you are loved. I invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. And you can either sing or listen along. in your bulletin. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Her opening hymn is, O oh, Let the Son of God Enfold You.
we have heard from him declare to you God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So let us confess our sins with hope and with courage. We confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we admit that we are slow to believe and even slower to follow where you lead us. We doubt your promise, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. We choose to live small lives when you have given us the biggest gift of all, your eternal life. Forgive us, raise us up to a place where we can serve you faithfully. Christ is arisen, bringing gifts of life, mercy, and pardon for sin. Believe that you are forgiven. Go out in the life and the joy of your Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. But if you are, you are, right? Okay, well, we'll ask. <laughs> okay, do you see this right here? What do you notice about it? Do you notice anything different from last Sunday? No. No? Ah. Um, do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. What do you notice about this? Um, I guess that is on it. Yeah. And what color are they? Red. Red. That's right. So in the Bible today, we're going to have a story. Well, today is Pentecost, and in the next two weeks, we're going to talk about the Spirit. And next week, you're going to hear the story of how the Spirit came down on everybody. And in the Bible, it says something really weird. It says that the Spirit came down, and it looked like tongues of fire resting on their heads. Sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? You know, we don't always talk about the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is what gives us the ability and the power to move and do things in this world. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit in this world, acting and doing all sorts of stuff, showing up in big ways. So many when people talk about miracles and stuff, I kind of think that's the Holy Spirit moving. It's kind of a weird and a strange thing that we have in our Christian church, but it's kind of awesome to read about in Scripture. So when you're here at next Sunday, I want you to listen for the tongues of fire, because I think you're going to love that. Okay? okay? Will you pray with me? Let's get our hands going. And go one, two, three. Dear God, thank you that you are alive and that you move among us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, girls. You can go take a seat. <laughs> Today is Pentecost Sunday, and just because I really enjoy the Holy Spirit, we're going to spend two weeks on it. So we'll get it this week and next week. This week, we have Galatians 5, 13 through 26. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. 
for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, adultery, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the word of the Lord. For you are called to freedom. This is the big message that Paul has. You are called to freedom. But what kind of freedom is Paul talking about? Is it no holds barred, everything goes kind of freedom? I can do what I want, when I want it, how I want it. I am free to be an individual and have my individual place and my individual rights. I don't believe it is. Paul is actually very clear. The whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I remember in seminary when this became very apparent to me. It became apparent to me that we are always subject to someone. That's just the way it works. Unless I were to go into a room, lock my door, and just be by myself, then maybe I'd be subject to just me and me alone. But as long as we live in community and we move in community, we are subject to the community that we are in. That's the importance that we need to remember, the important message that we have to share. There's something about that that is sacred and important. We are subject first and foremost to Christ. Let's just get that down on the table and make sure that we know that that's the case because if you don't realize that, then we've got nowhere else to go. Christ is head of our church. Christ leads us. Christ is the one who guides us. But then Christ does something that might be challenging for us in that Christ calls us into community with one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Loving our neighbor is a big task. What does loving our neighbor really look like in this world that we're in today? Does loving your neighbor mean wearing a mask, not wearing a mask? Does loving your neighbor mean getting a vaccination, not getting a vaccination? Does loving your neighbor mean protesting, not protesting? Does it mean just going about your business and taking care of each other? There's a lot of ways we can consider loving our neighbor. Does loving your neighbor mean going and helping them out at their house? in working alongside of them, or does it mean staying away because you know you might make them sick? It's gotten a lot more complicated, hasn't it, in this last year to love your neighbor, to know what that means and how that works. This is where the spirit getting involved then gets a little uncomfortable. Because what is the spirit? You saw me trying to explain it to the girls, and. When I start to talk about the Spirit, it seems a little kooky. This force of God that moves and moves us into place and sometimes sets us on our path, that heals us, that intercedes for us on our behalf, that groans. And here Paul says, love your neighbor, and to do that you have to live by the Spirit. 
And my presbytery and decent and in order brain doesn't quite know what to do with that because the spirit, as far as I was told growing up, is not decent nor in order. The spirit comes and goes, and if it really is a wind that blows in, you can't really control the wind. So how do you practically live out the spirit through the spirit love of your neighbor? What does that actually look like? Well, Paul says, do not gratify the desires of the flesh. If we really truly are here for community, then we cannot be here for the desires of the flesh. We cannot be here for our own selfish indulgences. There's a big long list that I'm not going to repeat that Paul goes through. But when you read each and every one of those items on the list, they are about self-gratification. I'm going to take care of myself no matter what my neighbor needs. There are two things I think make our faith very, very grounded. Love God, love your neighbor. If what you are doing in your life violates any of those two principles, then we have to start back over again. Love God, love your neighbor. And in here, in this Galatians passage, we're given some very practical ways to do just that. By contrast, those, the fruit of the Spirit, that unknown being that sometimes eludes us that we don't quite know what to do with it. Here's your practical advice about what the Spirit does. The fruit of the Spirit is love. That's a very solid thing. Love one another, love your neighbor, love yourself, love God. Joy. Joy isn't just feel happy within yourself, but joy leads us to hope, and joy extends beyond her. Joy is that joy that comes from knowing that God is here. Peace. It's not just I'm going to make nice with you, and we're going to smile and be civil with one another. Peace. That passes all understanding. Peace that transforms barriers, peace that breaks down walls. Patience. If you want a really practical thing, ask God for patience, but don't do it unless you actually want things to come along that will try your patience. Kindness. <coughs> we could use a whole lot more kindness in this world. Not fakeness, not, oh, isn't that nice but truly looking out for the other person and being kind to them. Generosity. God's grace comes to us in an abundance. So give out of that abundance. Faithfulness. You know, the one that will be faithful to you always is God. Be faithful back. Be faithful to one another. Gentleness. Remember to approach one another with gentleness, with love, with compassion, with goodness. And finally, self-control. It's okay to get emotional, and it's okay to get angry, and it's okay to discuss and get vibrant about that conversation. But remember that we are in community, and eventually we bring that community back to the center. We are here for one another. These are the things that God calls us to through the Spirit. This is what we are to live up and into. Because if we live by the Spirit and are guided by the Spirit, God can work and God can move among us in big and great ways. And if all of that sounds just a little overwhelming, think of it this way. You don't have to be all those fruits of the Spirit all at once. 
Sally, you might be joyful on a day when I don't feel joyful. Francis, you might be patient when I need patience. Dennis, you might, you might be kind in a time when I don't feel like being kind and remind me what it's like. We each of us can live into these fruits and at different times live into different ones. And as a community, if we go together as a community, if we look out for one another, if we choose to be in relationship with one another, the fruits of the Spirit will show up in big and exciting ways. God will move among us and the Spirit will act in ways that call us into being deeper and more meaningful being than if we just came in the store, sat down in the pew, and lived for ourselves. So I invite you to live into the fruits of the Spirit. Love God. Love one another. Love your neighbor. Amen. Our response of music today, the Spirit of God descend upon my heart. I'll invite you to stand. The offering plates are still located in the back, so if you would like to give, you can do so at the end of church and drop in the back. But let us lift up our doxology at this time.
when we give of ourselves, you prosper our hearts. Receive and bless these gifts and use them and us for the ongoing work of your merciful kingdom. For the sake of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Friends, this feast is a feast of thanksgiving and of joy. And it is extended as the table beyond our pews. Because in the extraordinary times where we know not all are joining us here. We know that we are bound together in this meal, not because we eat special bread or we drink special wine, but because Christ is present with us. And that presence of Christ extends beyond this table and into our homes. I invite you now to join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful, the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs and of angels, with all the faithful of every time and every place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup, and we proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be communion in body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and all who share in this feast. Unite us in faith. Encourage us with hope, inspire us to love, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and having given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he poured out the wine, saying, This is the covenant of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. When the boundaries of our community have been stretched, Beyond the pews, know that every time you eat this bread, you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. The body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now lifting up our voices to the Lord, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now our benediction, let us say it together. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. He has a purpose for us being there. Christ lives in us. 
and has something he wants to do through us. We believe this and go in his grace, his love, and his power. Amen. Our closing hymn is God Be With You Till We Meet Again. Thank you.